Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about industrial control panel. So let's dive right into it. Now, why exactly do we have need of industrial control panel? Well, reality is there are many things that needs controlling, that needs driving, that needs safeguarding, meaning the equipment should be safe from people and people should be safe from the equipment. So it is a very serious scenario where you have to do two things, protect people and equipment. These two should not make love to each other. Both will get destroyed. So it is one of those things that are very serious and is central for management because many times you must have heard the whole companies, industries, everything. How do they run? They run on programmable logic controls. Now, uh, PLC as they say. Now, where the heck you put the hardware for programming logic control? You put it in this industrial control box because this place is designed in such a way that it is acting as a central node for everything. Uh, again, the size could be huge. It could be sometimes as big as a goddamn building if it's controlling a very giant uh, factory itself. So that's the whole point. And it also allows very good serviceability and repairing abilities, meaning many times uh, most of us humans, normal people, they are used to the fact that we have things that are disposable. Industry is not like that. Simply because the cost of the, each equipment could be idiotically high. Meaning, if, if you have a scenario where you have a giant ass motor and you had a giant ass relay to drive it or contactor to drive it, here's the deal. You do not want to throw, even if let's say your motor burns out and you have to throw that away, you do not want to be in a scenario where I'm throwing the contactor away. Like, contactor would be cheap compared to motor. Yeah, but still would be hundreds of dollars. So that's the reason why everything is designed in such a way that it can be uh, repaired and serviced over again and again. So that's why many times you will see uh, graveyards, which has like, you know, uh, junkyards basically. Uh, they have uh, industrial control box. They will be like from very old. They will be like from 1970s. Like, why the heck they are there? And why the heck they are in such a good quality? Again, they have to keep replenishing. Unless the company goes bankrupt generally you will always find very ancient things because again these things are designed to work and work for a very long duration meaning they will get serviced repaired year over year decade over decade decade over decade that's a very common thing now so that's why we need something that is robust so what were the design aspect of it now every need and uh, scale is different. You have to understand, there are people who need it for mobile tower, they will have a different requirement. Again, each mobile tower could have a different requirement. There could be a mobile tower that has like huge box because there is nothing fancy in it, it just has a huge battery. I have seen many of these mobile tower when I'm going to court cases. It's like the, there is a mobile tower middle of nowhere, but again, they do not have reliable electricity. They have giant solar farm uh, powering the battery system. That's how they are, you know, keeping sure the mobile towers working 24 into 7. Some scenarios they're like very small, very small. It's like on top of a building, a very small. Sometimes it could be huge. And sometimes you have dealing with power distribution for let's say giant buildings, factories, things of that nature. So you can be like YOLO. Stadiums, they could also have very huge ones. CNC control, that's the backbone of everything you see. So in those sort of scenarios, uh, numeric controls of uh, motor drivers would be a requirement. So the design would be accommodating of that. Then you have automation system, like how the heck you have a feedback loop. Because think of this, like when you look at your air condition, you'll find very few things. Realistically speaking, you will be surprised how few things there are. There's just one board that does everything. Now, when you go to industrial, like uh, let's say a giant kitchen or things of like that, you will find everything separated out. Why? They know for a fact that nobody's gonna build, uh, you know, even if they make it disposable, make it cheaper, uh, company will be like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy it. Uh, a hotel restaurant will be like, yeah, I'm not touching this. Anything goes wrong, you throw away the whole thing. I do, I'm not rich enough to keep updating. So everything is designed in such a way that it can be serviced, repaired again and again and again and again. So that's why this sort of box have to take all of that data into account. And box selections are done in design phase. It's not something that, okay, I built the machine, now I'm building the control box. Generally, it's not preferred to do that because you could end up in a scenario where you have CNC machine, but let's say for some example, EDM machines, they have idiotically high complexity. Again, inherently they are simple, but they have too much complexity, meaning they have way too many water pumps, way too many sub-control systems and all that jazz. So you will be like, okay, this is the box is barely like, let's say, uh, uh, three meter cubed, but your control box would be like, uh, you know, larger than that. So that's why you have to design in the design phase itself, like how I'm going to control it. And then part selected creates the size limitation, meaning if you are talking about motor drivers, they will have a very specific size. Now, motor drivers could be very small, but you have spindle driver, they would be huge. So how do you manage that? You have to think about it in the design phase. It's like, okay, is the spindle, because many spindle drivers are designed in such a way that they will protrude out of the box casing. And so you can directly access it. You have to think about that. You have to, uh, if you are getting it custom made, you have to order that, hey, can you cut out this uh, spot, so to say, or you have to do the cutting yourself. It's a very few order cases. So all these things go into the design phase itself. And designs are generally not standardized, generally not uh, what you call, uh, basically just control phone someone. And there are some case designs, but majority of the time you will have like some people who are like, hey, what do you exactly do you want? Okay, you want this? Okay, this is how it's gonna cost you. So 
design is very uh, selective, very precise. Again, you could have a scenario where it's like, let's say every mobile company is like uh, agreed upon in this sort of general area, or you could have a scenario where one giant company has like, you know, industrial box that is fine tuned for them, uh, their use cases, and then like you're seeing the same Ford box size everywhere. That could happen. So how this case is made, generally they are made out of metal, but again for low cost operation, you could find uh, plastic systems. Again, it has their own advantages, but plastic has this one weakness. Even though plastic is got tier undestructible, it does not like sunlight. Meaning if you have a plastic box inside, nothing can break it, nothing flat out. Unless it's super cheap, nothing will damage it. But the moment you put it outside, the moment ultraviolet makes love to it, it inherently breaks down the molecular chain on a molecular level. So nothing can be done to it. So plastic does not like outdoor environment. Metal have 10,000 flaws, but uh, if you can coat it properly, basically if you can keep the moisture away, sunlight is like, bro, I got this. I can do this all day. I can actually do this all day. So that's the whole point. Generally metals are preferred, specifically if you have very high voltage, where your short circuit or arcing fault could be huge, as in like thousands of amp, the casing would be designed in such a way that you can withstand it. So uh, you can have, uh, generally metal is preferred. And thickness of the metal is designed by that kind of amp requirement, meaning what is the worst case scenario? Like if, oh, the worst boom is gonna happen inside it is like 100 amps kind of short circuit, eh, one millimeter. But it was like, yeah, it can go really bad. The thickness of the metal would be designed in such a way that it should be able to sustain it, at least one shot. So that's the whole point. Then you have gaskets and filters that are used for ingress protection, meaning many of the time industrial box have to be put outdoor, specifically by mobile industry, or like you have your ISP boxes, those have to be built outside. Now problem with outside is like there is water. Sunlight, metal is like, I got this. Water, electronics really don't like it. So how do you do that? Again, there is another problem also because you have heat generation, because even if you have very efficient part, like let's say you find a really good uh, AC adapter that is like, like let's say very efficient, as in like 99% efficient. You have optical uh, switcher, routers and all that, those are very efficient. Here's the deal. Over time, it's gonna heat up. If you completely seal it up, over time it's gonna heat it up. So fundamentally, you have to have cooling system built in. Specifically in India, it may not be a thing that most people living in Canada will understand, but in India, you do not have cooling fan, it goes poof very quickly. So it's one of those things. And based on that, you could even have a scenario where filters have uh, some sort of sensor where they're like, if filters are clogged up, it will keep trigger an alert. Hey, can you replace the filter or fix it or whatever have you? So all those things have to be designed based on use cases. It's like, A, is it outdoor? B, many times, even if it's not outdoor, it will still have all those gaskets and filters simply because if it's working, let's say in wood mill, uh, wood mill is specifically dealing with CNC, it creates very fine dust. And that dust is destructive to almost everything. So you have to have a scenario where you giant filters and very slow RPM fans of so air is very gentle and it's like, only then it can survive for long. Otherwise, like it will trigger alert every day. So those things have to be selected wisely, specifically just for the case. Strength and size is based on components. Are exactly the same thing where you have like, you know, small uh, laser cutter will have very small things, even smaller, like just a distribution box would have even small, but something huge would have be huge things. Case has to be done very thoroughly. You cannot just like, Control C, Control V. Again, sometimes cases are designed for, you may be like, hey, I just have few contactors here. Here's the deal. Each contactor has a coil. Coil generates heat over time. Again, not on day one, but if you do not open it up for, let's say, 15, 16 days, you may find in 16th day it started to overheat. That's why it's like you have to think about those things. And many times, nowadays, specifically because of the low cost component, many of the boxes have the ability to have ingress sensor inside it, meaning it can detect inside temperature, inside humidity, inside all the jazz. So what about the accessory? I, so far I've talked about the box that goes into uh, making the, you know, what you see, what you interact with. But there, it also takes a lot of accessories. Removing the components that you are adding into it, meaning the PLC controller, motor drivers, relays, contactors, things of that nature, remove that part of it. But there are certain accessories that are specifically built for this ecosystem, so to say. So you will generally get a removable back panel because it's much easier to assemble rather than like, you know, trying to coach, uh, you know, shovel your way into it it's like hey the panel is out i'm gonna build everything properly into it and then i'm gonna yoink it inside done go home sweet dreams that's far more preferable so uh, every high quality one generally will give you a back panel that is removable then you have cooling and heating uh, like heating may sound hot again for indians it sound hot uh, because again we are used to cooling everything not uh, heating but sometimes people prefer heating for rather than cooling to remove moisture is simply because it's far more cost effective and if you are like in, in a normal scenarios components are rated for 50 degrees celsius some components are rated for 70 degrees celsius if you uh, really want to use heating as a way of removing moisture you will put everything in the box to rate it at 71 degrees celsius in those sort of scenario you can just use heaters to keep the inside temperature high enough that 
moisture content goes down. So uh, that's a one approach. Again, I'm not familiar with this, but again, apparently somehow people in places where have high humidity and low temperature, it's desirable. So, and again, you may need heating for some other also cases for like Alaska, if you are somewhere there, you may need heating, otherwise the, the contactors and relays, their spring will uh, get damaged. So that is it. Cooling, again, we Indians will know this very well. And cooling is also one thing, you may not want a fan running 24 into 7 because a fan, when it's running, it's creating a suction. Now that suction is uh, drawing a lot of things from uh, through the filter. Now, if it is running continuously, the filter will clog up. The moment you turn off the fan, the like there is a plastic uh, slack back. Now that slack back removes a lot of dirt. So you want it on, off, on, off. Do not want to run it like on 24 into 7. It will jam surprisingly quickly. And not to mention, it will also waste electricity, bearing life, um, electricity wastage, all that jazz. Cable trunks, that's the primary thing. You will always see whenever you're seeing this sort of gray sort of box, they are cable trunks specifically designed with this slot holes. So you can just have small, small wires if you have this. And if you are in a scenario where you have like giant, big, thick ass wire, three phase wires, you can just break these fingers. These fingers are designed by all manufacturers in such a way that you can just break them off. Be mindful, they are once break off, meaning if you accidentally took it here and they're like, hey, I don't think I need it here. Yeah, there will be like a teeth missing there permanently. So be mindful with that. Cable trunk is for wire management. Then you have a panel interface, basically things that are outside. There all could be interface. There could be a lot of lights, buttons in cheap levels or expensive ones. It could have an entire human interface where you could have a like touch screen there. And nowadays is very common. Now, lights and uh, interface is very important because many times there will be light that shows off. Now, this is one of the common things that people don't understand. Like, why the heck it shows that it's off? Because again, how else would you know whether it's power is cut or it's off? That's why there is a giant light, uh, red LED is like glowing. It's like, bro, I'm off. That means somebody sent a signal or I'm off because of uh, some trip. It won't be, you will never have a show. It's like, is it off or is somebody disconnected the main disconnect? That's why the off light is also there. So all those things make your life far more easier, far more manageable. And color coding and label use, this is very critical as well. And this separates from basic bitch to high quality one. So for example, like this is just an example where every circuit that is running on uh, digital logic, meaning either is gonna give on or off, again, depending on voltage, it could be 12 volt for on or 24 volt for on, three volts for on, five volts for on, whatever has it, it just goes into one section and has one color code, meaning you, you can just put a multimeter there and just figure it out what's working, what's not working. If you're seeing rather than let's say 3.5 volt, you're saying, hey, why the heck it shows 2.5 volts? Hey, why the heck is the voltage is changing like analog value? That means it's wrong. <laughs> so it's designed in such a way that you want to, you want to follow color code as much as possible. You want to label every single wire as much as possible. Doing so makes your life much more easier after a while. Again, on day one, you will hate it. You're like, because while you are working, you are in the zone. Basically, every data, design data is going into your RAM, your RAM here. Now, problem is, the moment you flush the RAM, basically you sleep. Next day you come, it's like, ah. Uh, that's why, that's why I need to label everything, color code it properly. Meaning if a properly done system, you will just, just by looking at it, it's like, okay, this is AC high voltage line. This is a uh, DC uh, low voltage power. This is, uh, you know, digital signal lines. These are analog signal lines. Just by looking at it, just as a first glance, these sort of accessories, like, you know, cover plates and all that jazz. And that's why you will see people are spending a lot of money. There are like, uh, you can buy, uh, label printers that print heat shrink uh, sort of system where you can even label it properly and that will last very long and you will like isn't that overkill no when you're dealing with hundreds of cable hell no at that point in time you'll be like thank god i spent so much extra money on this because it's like otherwise i'll lose all my hair so it is one of those things that sounds like an accessory it sounds like a you know show off kind of no it's very important people have learned it the hard way that you have to do it on day one then we come to the final deal of commissioning, meaning how do you give it to the customer? Now, there are local laws. It's not something specifically dealing with high voltage. It's not something that you can just, hey, I built a ticket and go. It has to go through some commissioning. Now, again, depending on your local situation, it could be like, ah, eh, just have, make sure I have good grounding and all that to like, dude, is it ingress protection? Is it like, uh, what is the environment? Based on that, there would be codex, meaning if you are in an environment where you have a lot of oil vapors, is it safe enough? Is it has like, what is the arc probability? All those things have to go into the system, local laws, apply on this then you have to understand this build quality because you can buy some very very poorly built china one you can also buy idiotically expensive german built one now what would be the difference because on day one both of them will work so what's the difference the quality build unit will allow you one very critical aspect serviceability repairability and maintainability meaning day one it's no difference the moment you have any failure which it will happen if you have like let's say this many components something will go wrong it happens physics law reality chaos theory you will have a contractor going you lol or you can have a power supply going poof in those sort of scenario how quickly can you get this puppy back on uh, working that differentiate from 
okay equipment to quality equipment. A quality equipment would be so well built that it's like, dude, I can keep just keep working on it. Sometimes uh, like people, of course, uh, like factories and generally they have electrician on hand. So those electrician generally they will fix it on their own and uh, there will be a booklet. That's also another aspect of it. Pop proper wire diagram, cable numbering, all those also have a booklet and those booklets. That's why you will always find weird numbers there. It's like ZXLR. It's like, what the hell is that? Again, look at the booklet. It will say that like, this is a sense wire for using for this. It's like exactly everything. And that makes your life so much easier. Again, day one is useless. But the day there is a fault, you will be like, dude, I'm so glad I spent twice as money on the laptop. Isn't twice as money too much? Yeah, but not really. Especially if you want runtime, uptime to be high. And things go wrong. There is like no engineer is going to tell you, yeah, buy this hardware, it never goes down. Nah, that's not going to happen. They know for a fact something is going to run on sooner or later. Hopefully later if it's a high quality one. So inherently, uh, most of uh, all those thought put into it will literally tell you it's like dude somebody put some time here somebody put some time here again there is no cable gland but again somebody put some serious effort here it's like hey if i don't have cable gland how about i zip tie everything so if you have a scenario it's like hey dude this contractor went away or this mcb is not working done go home suit him super easy to repair and that matters not on year one year 10 year 20 something will go wrong it does go wrong always goes wrong you have to repair it replenish it refurbish it in those sort of scenario you'll be like Cheap quality and true quality. That would be the differentiating factor. Until then, you'll be like, dude, I wasted too much money. The moment that happens, oh, that's why I spend money. It's almost like an insurance policy. And it must last in intended environment. For example, uh, the gasket system may be not needed if you are working in a dry environment. Basically, you do not have any scenario where you have anything other than gases, but you are working in a where you have very high fine dust particle, for example, wood saws, uh, you have like, you know, sand blasting scenarios and things of that nature where you have like very fine dust, you need gaskets. And again, if it's outdoor, it has to withstand outdoor environment for long duration and depend on servicing life. Again, you can certify this sort of thing for 25 years, 30 years, 50 years based on your design. So commissioning is also thing, final thing. And that's why you can easily figure out until that point, everything is like awesome. But that point you have to go through law and it's like, yeah, I did everything properly or I, you know, cut cost. So this was my presentation on industrial box. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.